A Republican congressman got a woman fired because he didn't like her politics and her activism. So this is from reporter Aaron Ruper. He says, one of the most powerful House Republicans, Rodney, I'm going to butcher this so bad, Freling Heisen from New Jersey, the new chair of the House Appropriations Committee, got a constituent in trouble by writing a letter to her employer that called out her progressive activism. The employee, uh, Sally, Sally, uh, Avalenda of West Caldwell, who's active in the progressive New Jersey uh, 11th for Change group, ended up resigning from her job as senior vice president and assistant general counsel at Lakeland Bank, according to a report from WNYC. Uh, I'm not going to even try to pronounce his name again. Let's go with Representative Rodney's letter uh, sent on campaign letterhead to bank board member and Rodney donor Joseph O'Dowd appears to be correspondence he sent to other contributors as well. Quote, let's be clear that there are organized forces, both national and local, who are already hard at work to put a stop to the agenda of limited government, economic growth, and stronger national security. Rodney's letter reads, As you may have seen in the front page of the New York Times, the Democrat political organizations, the DCCC, run by Nancy Pelosi, has targeted my district for Democrat takeover. Democrats have chosen to target districts like ours because we sit in prime media markets and their protesters are highly organized. But at the bottom, in blue pen, Rodney wrote by hand, P.S. One of the ringleaders works in your bank. So, she ends up, there's pressure put on her, she ends up saying, I, you know, I'm resigning. No, this is the same, this is what happens when they fire you, but they don't want to look bad, so they go, no, we're not firing her, she's voluntarily resigning, and she told us she wants to do it. So the thing that makes this so disastrous is you have the government, a representative of the government, cracking down on a private citizen for her free speech, for her protest, for her activism. Now, he didn't lock her up, but she lost her livelihood as a result of it. There's a very strong case that this is, you know, a direct violation of the First Amendment. You're supposed to have the right to do free speech and free protest. And that's exactly what she did. She's targeting somebody who she thinks has an odious agenda and who's bad for the country. And he applies pressure, she loses her livelihood. Is that the way it should work? And also, where are the free speech warriors on the right? Who love calling, um, you know, left-wing college kids snowflakes. And by the way, they're right about that oftentimes. But why does your team get a pass here? So this guy had his feelings hurt by the activism of a private citizen, so now I'm gonna apply pressure and make her lose her job. Is that how it should work? What if it was flipped? What if it was flipped? What if it was some conservative, some right-winger, doing activism and doing their free speech and having protests against a, a Democratic elected official, and the Democratic elected official wrote a letter to the employer of that right-winger, and said, I don't like what he's doing. And then that person resigns. How would you feel about that? You'd say, that's bullshit, right? And you'd be correct. That is bullshit. You shouldn't have to worry about losing your livelihood because you want to participate in your democracy. So this guy is a, a special little snowflake. This guy is, uh, he's triggered from this microaggression and he needs a safe space and he's willing to ruin somebody's life to make his feelings, uh, Get a little better. My feelings are hurt, so I'm gonna have to have you lose your, uh, your livelihood and have to change careers and, you know, upend your life here because I couldn't take criticism.